I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to be looking at Logic's Auto Sampler. This is a really useful little built-in application which allows us to capture the sounds of external hardware and to turn their sounds into samples that we can then use within Logic Sampler. Let's see how it works. What I want to do is to sample this Moog Sirin, and I'm going to sample two sounds. One's going to be a bass line, and the other one's going to be more of a kind of sustained sound, because the Sirin can only play one note at a time, and I want to create a sample instrument which allows me to play chords. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to set up Logic's external instrument plugin. I'm going to do that by pressing the plus button up at the top here and selecting external MIDI. And what I'm also going to do is to make sure that this box is checked, which allows me to configure the USB and the audio requirements of this device. What I mean by that is that the USB connection is going to be the one that's going to receive uh, MIDI signals from Logic to generate the sounds within the Sirin, whilst the audio output from the Sirin back to the computer is going to capture the sound of those to turn those into samples. So I can see straight away that the MIDI destination over USB is set up correctly, and the audio input is basically set up to make sure that the connection that I've made between the Sirin and my audio interface is correct as well. So once they're both working, I can press Create. So what I've now got is a track which is going to be able to generate sounds um, from the Sirin. I can then close this external instrument plugin down, and what I'm going to do is the first effect slot here is to specify the auto sampler, which you can see is in a category all of its own between the most recently used plugins and then Logic's full range of plugins underneath. And the auto sampler plugin looks like this. So what this allows me to do is to configure a series of recordings that the auto sampler is going to generate or make from the external hardware that I've set up. So let's just have a quick look around. What it's going to do is to firstly set, uh, sort of set up the key range um, over which I want to make this recording. So in other words, I can specify the lowest note I want it to sample and the highest note. And I'm happy with the range that's been set automatically, although I am just going to add one semitone to grab this extra C right up at the top of the range. What I can then do is to specify how regularly I want it to make a sample. Now let's be clear about this. The way that the sampler works, of course, is that it's going to trigger a sound on every key, I want to be able to play a chromatic scale from uh, this uh, set of recordings that are going to be made. If I only sample one note, the further I get away from that recording, the less um, realistic that sound is going to be. If I sample one low note and use it as a trigger for the highest note, it's not really going to sound like the same sound anymore. It's going to feel stretched and strange. So what I need to do is to make regular recordings all the way up through the key range to make sure that I get a realistic, convincing instrument. Now, I could sample every single note, but I think actually that might be overkill. I need to find a balance somewhere in between. Now, Logic is suggesting uh, recording every sixth semitone, but I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to record every three. So I can nudge this down and record every third uh, semitone, or for the musicians amongst you, that's every minor third. I don't want round robins. This is a way of recording different uh, performances per note. So in other words, recording multiple versions of the same note. But because the Sirin isn't that subtle an instrument, it's going to generate the same sound every time I capture it. I don't need to be recording layers of round robins. And the other thing I need to do is to make sure that I'm only setting a recording length that's appropriate for the sound. Now, the sound that I've set up here is a sort of slightly, uh, somewhere between a, maybe one and two seconds long. So I don't need to be capturing 10 seconds per recording. I'm going to be bringing this down to about, let's say, three and a half seconds, just so I'm not taking up loads of hard drive space with lots of sort of dead air between each individual note. And what I can also do, and we'll see this again in a little while, is to specify auto loops. And we're going to come back to that when we look at maybe recording a second sound in a moment. For now, I'm happy with the settings that I've got. So what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to press sample, and this is going to begin the process of capturing sounds. Remember, every minor third or every third semitone is going to be captured, and um, Logic will go through, and the auto sampler will just go through and create all of the recordings that we need. And then it's going to map those for us to create a sampler instrument that we can load. So I'm going to press sample. And what I can do is to give this a name. I'm going to call this Sirin Bass. And you can see that it's going to save it in an auto sampled folder within the sampler instruments. Um, so we'll be able to find that really easily once it's done. Let's press start. Thank you. 
Okay, so you can see that it's just gone through and you can see the waveform that's generated every time one of those sounds is uh, captured. And I think that that instrument has now been captured in a way that we can load. Let's find out. I'm going to just move this to the side for a moment. And what we'll do instead is to set up a new software instrument track, which I'm going to do by pressing again the plus button. This time we need a software instrument. And um, what I'm going to do is just specify that I want to load the sampler. And when I do that, I have a chance to go browsing for the sound that I want. And here, where it says factory default, what I can do is to jump into all of the samples that exist within the lists. And up here, up at the top, we've got auto sampled. And here is the Sirin bass. And if we're lucky, what we should now have is a playable instrument made up from those recordings. So I've captured that sound and it's now available for me to use within the sampler. And this is brilliant, particularly if maybe your mate's got the best synthesizer in the world ever and what you want to do is borrow it for a weekend and sample it to create instruments of your own. Or indeed, if you want to just have access to some of your favorite sounds on the move, maybe you spend some time in a studio and maybe you've also got a laptop and you want to be able to go and make sounds somewhere else where you can kind of effectively take your favorite sounds with you without having to take the hardware. Okay, let's sample a second instrument. I'm going to come back to my first original instrument over here. And what I'm going to do is to configure a slightly different sound for the Sirin. I'm going to just increase the sustain level and I'm just going to have a bit of a play and see if I can make a sound which feels a little bit more pad-like. Okay, so that feels a little bit more smooth and a little bit more sustained. But as we can hear, as I try and play two notes at the same time, I can't because the Sirin is a monophonic instrument. So by sampling it, what I have a chance to do potentially is to create this nice sort of pad-like sound, which uh, maybe I can incorporate in a slightly different way or sort of go almost beyond the capabilities of the Sirin itself. So once again, I'm going to sample it. Now this time what I want to do, because I've increased the sustain level, each note is going to last for much, much longer. So what I want to do is to create a longer sample each time. I'm going to increase the sample length back up to maybe something more like eight and a half, nine seconds, somewhere there. That's the only adjustment I need to make. I still am um, not worried about capturing round robins or anything along those lines. But what I am going to do is I'm going to ask Logic to create fades or loop points for me as it makes these recordings. And actually, if we look carefully at the waveform as these sounds are captured, we'll actually see that happening each time a sound is captured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use search with crossfade. And what that's going to do is just as each sound is recording, it's gonna go looking for crossfades to start thinking about um, where these sounds might loop really nicely uh, without me having to go and do that manually. It's worth saying, of course, if I'm not happy with the choices that the auto sampler makes, I'm in a position to change them myself in the sampler after the event. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is to press sample. I'm going to sample the key range because of course I've increased the recording time. This is going to take a little bit longer. This is going to be Sirin pad. So once that process is complete, Logic will just take a moment to configure that sample instrument for us, but it's already done that amazingly quick. Okay, so let's drop back down to our sample instrument uh, uh, track here, drop back into the sampler and uh, come back into the auto sampled options. And here we're gonna find this second sound that we've created, Sirin pad. So I'm gonna load that right away. And what we're then in a position to do hopefully is to play this sound and see um, how those sustain points have worked out.
And of course, it's worth bearing in mind that at the moment, all we're doing is playing these kind of raw samples exactly as they've been captured. The sample is an amazingly powerful instrument in its own right. So what, of course, I'm in a position to do is to switch on its filters, start thinking about how I might actually sort of configure this sound a little bit more. I can make it a little bit more muted, for instance. And of course, I'm in a position to sort of configure its release time and maybe have a sound that uh, fades out over a longer period of time. Now, one thing that's really worth bearing in mind is that the auto um, sampler sits in here as an audio plugin. And so its position in a chain of effects is really important. What happens if I wanted to capture the siren, but with effects? Well, I could do that. I would be in a position to say, okay, well, what I want to do is to insert a reverb first and then put the auto sampler after it. And what would happen is because the auto sampler came after that reverb plugin, it would capture the sound of the siren through the reverb, and then it would print those effects and make them permanently part of the sound. So if you're someone who's experimenting maybe with external um, synths, maybe through effects chains of pedals and um, external hardware, then that's a really nice option to be able to create really interesting multi-sample instruments that aren't just hardware by itself or synths by themselves, but since triggering a whole range of other plugins. And if you like that idea, but you don't have access to that technology, you can create those chains of plugins within Logic yourself and capture those instruments through those effects chains.